Hey, welcome back to the shop. So I've made up about 350 of these track guide teeth like this one. Um, as you can see based off of the prototype here that I made earlier. So as you can see, these are made of um, oak, the same material as I made the track pads, strong wood, it should work good. I shouldn't have, it should be durable enough, so that. And as you can see, it's much wider at the top than this one is. And that's also good too because that'll make it stronger as well. Because there will be a lot of stress on these as the track's trying to turn to keep it. Because these will be keeping it aligned. Um, so, it's, and it's just, it just looks taller here because this part is actually down mounted to the track pad. Whereas this is not. It'll be like mounted on here at the end. And the conveyor belt I'm using is much thicker. So, what I've done to this now is... It's about, a, the base is about an inch by an inch. It's, it's a little bit off, but it's, and it's not a critical thing. And then I've also cut a 10 degree taper on the side here, as you can see, as I have with this one. Now, that is important because, as, because that'll like guide it along through the center, the, the center of the wheel like this. So if, the, if it's off a little bit, it should, it should stay centered from that, that taper guides it in place. So what I haven't done is as you can see on these ones, there's also a taper to the side. And I, have, I don't have that in there, it's just a square. Now it's not really a critical thing to do that taper, but it just looks a lot better than this. So. I'm going to try to cut that taper in here. And how I did that for these ones is I just used the radial arm saw, set it to 10 degrees, and then just kind of worked my way through. But that's a, very, that's a very long and tedious process. But it worked for this because I only had to make five of these as a prototype. But now I have to make 300. So that process would work in theory, but it's going to take a long time. So I came up with another idea of how to do that much more efficiently. So I'm going to take you guys over and show you that right now. Alright, so what I've done is I've cut up a number of these um, 1 inch strips of 3 8 inch plywood. Just a good bit. And then, so what I have done here is I've lined up the track teeth along the back of this um, just bank there so that those are nice and lined up and square. Now I'll move this piece of just scrap um, like 2 by 4 or something move that against them so that now it's they're tight against there they're not going to move and what I can do is set this on top of there and now I can ha get my nail gun with these three quarter inch finishing nails very very light small nails and I can just go right along nail them all down alright now that they're all nailed down I have this long strip of a whole bunch of these um, teeth all aligned in parallel. Now what I can do is I'll take this over here to the table saw and I have that blade set at a 10 degree angle and I can just run this through through the table saw on both sides and that will give me the angle. I've done one of those here, and this is what I come up with. As you can see now, all of them have that 10 degree angle cut in. Much, much more efficient. And now, when I have to take them off, I can just kind of pull them off, because those are really light nails, and they sort of stick out there. I'll just um, pull those out with a plier. Even if they do break off in there, it's not it really doesn't matter because they're so small and won't make a difference. So that's how I get that taper in efficiently by 
putting a whole bunch of these on this one big strip. All right, so over here now, I've got all the teeth separated in this bucket. Cut them off of the nails and everything, so they're ready to go now. Finished with those. Now, I've started the most time-consuming process of this whole project, and that's cutting out the little squares in this conveyor belt 300 times for the, for the teeth to go into, to be held into place. They'll be down in there. So, I've made up this little jig here. What this is, is just a piece of like three quarter and three eighths inch plywood um, with these little legs on them. These are half inch, a half inch wide. So, and spaced, I think an inch and seven sixteenths, whatever. So they can fit in on like one specific track pad. And then I have, I've made it so that this end here is the, I think three and a half inches from here to the edge of the um, hole. And that's the correct distance to have the hole in the center of the track pad as long as this end is aligned with the end of the track pad, which was, is why I have this like um, straight edge here, just a piece of wood, something that's somewhat straight. Doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but close. So how this works is I just put it on there. Then I'll get my pen, if I can find where I put it. I'll get a pen, not a pencil, and then I'll mark it. I've already marked this with a pen, so it's fine. So I'll mark the inside of that, mark the edge of the circle and square I need to cut out. Then I'll get a very sharp utility knife, has to be a sharp blade. If you try to do this with a dull blade, it'll take forever. So then I'll just come in here and cut out the square. I usually do two passes on each side like this. So that I, um, to ensure that I'm getting all the way, all the way through the conveyor belt. All right, so now that's pretty good. I got this screwdriver here, just a thin, a thin screwdriver. And it's longer too, so I can get some leverage on it. And then I'll use this to get that square piece out of the conveyor belt. And sometimes, usually I need to do a little extra trimming here to get it out all the way. So there we go. Now I've got the square circle taken out of. I can just touch up, touch it up a little bit if I need to, like this. And then what I also do is just put the, one of these teeth in there to make sure it fits, make sure the hole is a good size. And that looks pretty good. So I just need to do that 300 times. That's it. And then I guess to, I'm going to cut out all of these before I actually like screw these teeth in, but I'll just show you guys how I, I plan to do that right now. So I'll just, I'm just going to do it on this end piece over here. So what I'll do is I'll get one of the teeth and put it in the, the hole that I cut out, just like that. And now I'll just get a screw like this, regular wood screw, and it'll screw up through the bottom, through the bottom of the track pad into the, into the tooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna drill out this, this piece at an eighth of an inch, which is the size of the, the shaft of the screw, not including the threads. And then I'll drill out the track pad that's the size of the threads. So the screw will not grab the track pad. It'll grab the actual tooth, only the tooth, and pull it in really tight to the pad. So I'll put this, and to make sure that the the hole is aligned. 
put this on there and I'll drill through this. And this, this drill's not long enough to go all the way through it, but put this on here. So now, I've got this drill, yeah, that, that was way off, but it'll work for the demo. So I've got this drilled out, eighth of an inch, that's the right size. I've, the hole has started over there. You can see how off center, that's a, that was a really bad drill. So I'll, it'll be better when I do this for real. Then I'll switch out the drill bit. And I'll drill this out at the size of the threads. And just to make sure I don't drill into the bench, put something there. So, something like that. Now I can, that's not the right, now I can put this back on. And take the drill out. I can get the drill into there. And then I'm just going to get a, a um, drill for the, the drill. All right, so I've got. Just this little thing here. And now I'll just drill this in here into the And now this tooth is on there extremely tight. That, was, that will not be going anywhere. So that's how I'll be attaching the teeth. Like I said, it's gonna take a very long time. I've made some progress this morning so far on this one track. I still have that much more to do and all of that one. So, and then after this, I'm hoping to um, start working on the drive system somewhat soon. We need to get some parts for that. So it might be a little bit while until I post the next video on that, hopefully. But I'll try to get in as soon as I can. So that's how I make the track. This is pretty much everything I'm doing with track, other than reinforcing the bottoms of the track pads. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. And if you just came across this channel, this is one video in a longer series showing the construction of my 30% scale ISU-152, a Soviet World War II era tank destroyer. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos about the tank and other cool stuff.